This video will have spoilers for The Book of Boba Fett, The Mandalorian, and one minor spoiler for Jedi Survivor, like, right now. So I recently played through Jedi Survivor, and was surprised to see a short cameo appearance from Boba Fett. This short interaction became one of my favorite encounters in a game that is full of great character moments and stunning set pieces. And that's because this appearance displays everything that makes Boba Fett an interesting character. He has his guard up from the minute he enters the scene, he's completely indifferent to anyone that doesn't affect his goals, he's in control of himself and the situation and has no desire to interact with you once your dispute is resolved. He isn't intimidated by anyone, and he has no hesitation at the prospect of fighting a rather powerful Jedi. The characteristics that make Boba Fett interesting in Jedi Survivor are exactly what's lacking from him in his own show. When the end credits scene of The Mandalorian Season 2 finale announced a show centering around Boba Fett taking over the criminal underworld, I was genuinely extremely excited. I thought this was a very good premise and could give us a chance to finally see Boba Fett fleshed out on screen in a way that was unique and darker than his wholesome heroic counterpart Din Djarin. I was expecting Boba to be a ruthless, tactical, and intimidating lone wolf anti-hero. He could have a code that he follows and be honorable in some regards, but he needed to be a man of few words and be willing to kill in a second if it was required. I was ready to see a plot full of deadly bounty hunters that Boba Fett would need to repeatedly outplay to survive and seize power from the Hutt Cartel. I thought we'd finally get to see why Boba Fett is the most feared bounty hunter in the galaxy. What we got from the show instead was... Let's just say they definitely subverted expectations. The Book of Boba Fett is a show that starts out rather strong and original, but by the end manages to ruin not only itself, but also its big brother, the Mandalorian. With that said, let's take a closer look at what went right, what went wrong, and what potential rewrites could fix the Book of Boba Fett. Since most of this video is going to be pretty negative, let's start with the positives. And the biggest compliment I can give this show is it is extremely fresh and original. For the first two episodes. The show starts out with a really well done example of subverting expectations. I don't think anyone thought going into this show that we would see Boba Fett join a tribe of Tusken Raiders, but this works really well because it feels like something could naturally happen to this character, given what we already know about him. His rise from slave to essentially leading the Tusken Raiders is really well executed, and the first two episodes that revolve around this are by far the best of the series. It was a really fresh direction to take Boba Fett, and it feels very natural that he fits into their culture so well. There are very harsh people, but not cruel without reason. Respect is earned among them, and as Boba proves his worth, he's adopted as one of them despite being an outsider. Boba also holds no grudge over being a slave to them, which I think represents a really important aspect of the character. He respects strength, and can think about injustices done to him with an open mind. The show makes the Tusken Raiders much more interesting than any other Star Wars project has done before, and Boba going through their initiation ritual and creating his own gaffy stick was incredibly satisfying to see. Also, from a purely cosmetic standpoint, the combination of his new black robes under his armor looks extremely cool. While the show really missed out on giving a unique and engaging story by killing Boba's tribe off so quickly, it is still a rather emotional moment when he discovers they've been wiped out. I could see the show going down a much more engaging storyline of Boba Fett teaching the Tusken Raiders to use modern technology and taking over the planet on their behalf. I think him having the tribe working under him would make his attempt to replace Jabba as the crime lord seem like a better decision. Throughout the whole show, it always seems a little ridiculous that Boba Fett thinks he can run a crime empire that pretty much consists of himself and Finnick Shan. Some other minor things I really enjoyed was the fact that Boba Fett used the gaffy stick to defeat Cad Bane, even though I felt like Cad Bane was overall not done very well, and definitely needed more screen time and build up if he was going to be the villain of the last episode. Black Chrysanthemum was also pretty cool to see here, and I really liked seeing the rivalry between him and the Trandoshans, but his presence also reminds me of how much potential they threw away for this show just by not including a bunch of bounty hunters. We could have had a plot where the Hutts throw every bounty hunter on their roster at Boba and we get to see him outsmart him using his experience and prior knowledge of them. And that brings me to some of the things I really do not like about this show. The absolute biggest one being that Boba Fett is nothing like Boba Fett. He feels like a completely different character in this show than in anything else we have ever seen him in. And they really force you to realize this in the finale when Cad Bane continually keeps saying, you're a killer Boba, you can't go straight, you're a bad guy. And it feels completely unnatural because there is zero references to who Boba was before this show. No one is scared of him, people act like they don't know his name, he does not act menacing, strong, tactical, he doesn't act like a bounty hunter at all. 
he's portrayed like just a really nice guy you know they tell you over and over that he's a crime lord that he's a bad dude but he doesn't do anything bad and there's this half thrown together arc in the last episode alone talking about how he's trying to redeem himself but we've seen no guilt for who he was before this show at all in any other episode you know he claims the the citizens as his people but throughout the show they never talk about him caring about them at all this show really just loves to call boba fett a crime lord it throws that word around so much but he's not a crime lord in this show it tells you it over and over but he never does a single thing that is morally gray the only indicator that he has plans to do anything relatively bad is when the freetown residents require him to not trade spice in exchange for their help being generous to the writing, you could argue this implies he did eventually plan to do this, but regardless of what the plans were, he immediately agrees not to anyway. In reality, Boba is pretty much just declaring himself the mayor of Mos Espa in this show. He collects tribute, so basically taxes, and attempts to run the city the way any government would. Realizing this actually makes the scope of his ambitions laughably small, and his new position almost feels like a downgrade from his status as a bounty hunter. He's also extremely lenient with all the citizens of the town, even when they repeatedly attempt to halt his progress. This is a trend that's been repeated many times in many franchises over the last couple of years. Hollywood does not understand what anti-hero characters need to be. While characters like Venom, Black Adam, and Boba Fett do not always have to serve as villains, they are certainly not cookie cutter heroes. It seems like the writers recently think that if their main character is a quote unquote bad person, that the audience won't be invested in their story. This has made all these anti-hero movies fall flat and be uninteresting. Like if you really want, you can have Venom save the world, but make it for a selfish reason. If Venom had wanted to stop Riot in that movie, simply because he claimed Earth as his hunting ground and saw Riot as a rival, it would have been far more in character and compelling than him deciding out of the blue that he loves the Earth. You know, forcing this redemption arc into an anti-hero story. This always falls flat because the characters haven't been given the chance to do evil things yet. In other words, there's nothing for them to be redeemed for. In Black Adam, the film repeatedly tells you over and over that Black Adam is not a good guy because he kills people, but this falls flat because he only kills bad people, which is something every other hero does consistently. And in the Book of Boba Fett, the writers think that telling you over and over again that Boba Fett is a crime lord adequately replaces him committing any crimes. And this idea is just wrong. I mean, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul do this perfectly. The two main characters are pretty bad people and hurt tons of people that don't deserve to get hurt. But you're still invested because you're watching it from their point of view. You can empathize with the bad things that have happened to them and what makes them this way. Other than just being too righteous in this show, Boba Fett talks way too much and removes his helmet constantly. In every appearance that Boba Fett has had before this, he's been extremely reserved and speaks only when necessary. His reputation should speak for him, and not knowing exactly what he's thinking adds intrigue to this character. You couldn't see his face either, so his reactions to things happening around him were also a mystery. And when he did speak, it was in short, impactful sentences that left little room for debate. He carried an air of authority and was intimidating because it felt like he was in control of the situation at all times. In this series, Boba never stops talking. He feels like an entirely different character. He's not tactical. He removes his helmet constantly for no reason. He's constantly one step behind all his opponents and succeeds mostly due to luck and asking other people to help him throughout the show. There's only one instance in the whole show I can think of where he takes off his helmet in public and it makes sense to me. And that's when he goes to the bar for the first time and they offer to clean it for him and fill it with gold. When he got attacked right after leaving the bar, I thought this would be a clever twist where the woman in the bar did this intentionally so he would have to be exposed by taking off his helmet during the ambush that happened. But Boba never even considers this as a possibility and the attack turns out to just be the mayor anyway. I mean, Boba just comes across as completely in over his head and just plain dumb for most of this series. He doesn't anticipate any actions of his enemies. He's not physically capable in most of the fights he's involved in. He relies on crime families to be true to their word with no reason to believe they will be. And he's caught completely off guard when he's betrayed by them. I mean, Black Chrysanthemum is able to sneak straight into his bedroom and throw him around like a ragdoll. He's surrounded in the streets by assassins and for some reason doesn't use his jetpack. More than this, to see a character that goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jedi be defeated by regular goons multiple times makes him seem like he's just an out-of-shape old man. Fennec Shan saves him multiple times and is shown to be much more physically capable than Boba, and just makes him look bad. It simply doesn't make sense that someone who has been a bounty hunter his whole life 
would not have any backup plans or any understanding of the way criminals think, especially one with the ambition to take over a crime family. He's also not ruthless at all in this show. He spares every person that crosses him multiple times. I mean, he should have killed the mayor after the first assassination attempt. He literally had evidence that the mayor did it, and then he goes to the mayor, and the mayor says, no, it wasn't me. And he's like, oh, well, shit, I guess it wasn't you. The fact that he even tolerates the mayor not sending tribute and all this is just dumb. It's, you're, you're the crime boss. Just kill the mayor and put in a puppet politician. He goes to harass the stupid biker gang about, you know, not paying for the water, and they convince him, no, the other guy's wrong, and he just does what they say. And it seems like he has a crazy amount of scenes in this show where he walks in ready to tell somebody off or make things go his way and they're just like nah i'm not gonna do that and he's like you know what you're right i'm not gonna do it i mean with the amount of times this happens between him and finnick shand in this show it just doesn't make sense like she should be in charge boba looks so inadequate and dumb next to his assistant he constantly makes the wrong call and almost dies because of it and finnick shand saves him or tells him a smarter thing to do and he does it I mean, just call it the Book of Fennec Shand at that point. <laughs> I think if they wanted us to be invested in him taking over this city, they needed to make it about his pride or his ambition, not about, oh, I want to protect the city from these other crime families who are not really hurting the citizens either, you know? It just doesn't make any sense. You know, all this just kind of adds up to make this plot not make any sense. How is Boba actually thinking that he can take over a crime family when he has no one in his crew at all? You know, he eventually gets this ridiculous group of these modders that are pretty bad. He has Black Chrysanthemum eventually, and he has Fennec Shand in himself. That's like, what, six, seven people? When you combine that with how dumb he acts the whole time and how out of his league he is next to all these other crime bosses, it just makes the whole plot feel dumb. It's like he's just a dude, a squatter, who walked into a palace and said, this is mine now, and everyone's like, okay, just stay over there, then no one really cares. I mean... Boba Fett has a reputation, you know? Him taking over, he should be able to just use the force of his reputation to kind of enact a certain amount of control. But it still doesn't make sense that he wouldn't even try to take over Jabba's throne without having any enforcers, you know? I don't understand why they killed off the Tusken Raiders in episode 3, or 4 I think. Because you already wrote it into the story that he has a crew, you know? You make them his enforcers living in the palace. That's all you gotta do. It would make his motivations more interesting. It would make his relationship with them more interesting. And it would just add to the Star Wars lore. You know what I mean? Like, after episode 6, the Tusken Raiders take over Tatooine and become like a real spacefaring civilization. Because of Boba Fett, you know? That'd be beautiful. And on top of all this... There are also a bunch of plot holes and just dumb character decisions that are made in this show. I mean, Black Chrysanthemum sneaks into Jabba's palace, or Boba's palace. He finds Boba Fett asleep and doesn't just shoot him or stab him. He, like, throws him around and starts wrestling him, which is just so dumb. And again, this makes another situation that Boba Fett has to have his friends come save him from. I mean, all you had to do to fix both the plot hole of the scene, where Black Chrysanthemum simply doesn't kill him, is just have Boba wake up a minute earlier and be tactical and, you know, fake be asleep and catch Chris Hansen off guard. That improves Boba Fett as a character. It makes Black Chris Hansen not look stupid and doesn't take us out of the story. Another decision they make later that also makes no sense is when the biker gang girl, I only remember her name, uh, convinces Boba to not stay in the palace and fight in the city because they can't abandon the people. But none of the crime families even care about the people at all. They're just there to kill Boba. So fighting in the city is doing nothing but destroying the city. It's just dangerous. And also, from a purely aesthetic point of view, we've seen a million street fights in Star Wars. It would have been fantastic to see a siege on Jabba's palace. You know, you could have a twist at the end where he didn't want to release the rancor, but he has to because it gets desperate and he releases the rancor and just goes crazy on their forces outside his gate. That'd be fantastic to see. And if you want to make this even better, just remove that one scene where they're all sitting at the table and the rancor cuts up through the floor. So it's a surprise to the villains, you know? Just the way this whole show is structured baffles me. Before I get into how bad this was for the Mandalorian that it took two episodes, they just made a lot of mistakes even without that. I mean, Boba here doesn't even feel anything like Boba Fett from any other Star Wars project I've seen. 
I feel like it would have been very easy to fix this, even if you were absolutely determined to do some kind of redemption arc that no one really wants, but you know, whatever, it could work. But they just miss all forms of redemption. It doesn't feel like the same person. Why didn't they just make the whole first episode? Him struggling to get out of the Sarlacc pit with a bunch of flashbacks as he passes out from the gas or whatever. And it just shows key moments of his life where we get to see more about him, why he is the way he is, some of the bad things he's done maybe. And this could set up a redemption arc or not a redemption arc because it would help do the heavy lifting of the scene's missing dialogue. You know, Boba's not supposed to talk much. He doesn't show his face much. He doesn't emote much. So put that in flashbacks from his perspective in the first episode. Basically establish who he is and why he is that way. Why he's so ruthless, so calculating, heartless. And then show him being that way through the rest of the series. And you will understand where he's coming from because you've seen what happened in his life. You could show some really harsh moments uh, with Django basically training him to survive. You could show his last conversation with Django. If you make it heartwarming, it's even, you know, more emotional. You could show him finding bounty hunters and feeling like he has a surrogate family and then have those bounty hunters betray him to save themselves. You could even make it to where they betray him and he somehow outsmarts them and out of spite basically screws them all over. You know, let's say they had like a detonator placed it in a building to block their escape when they leave and they betray him and try to leave without him so he blows it up and locks them all in and they all have to fight their way out together you know like out of spite and then you could even connect that to the sarlacc pit and improve how the sarlacc pits represented in the show just make it to where none of boba's gadgets are working he cannot escape the stuff is too you know the skin is too thick and make it to where the only option he has left is to fire his back his uh jetpack rocket but that would kill him and let's say at the end when he realizes he can't get out and survive he just says, fuck it, and he shoots it, and is like, if I'm gonna die, you're gonna die too. And then he lives, and he's all completely screwed up, burned, the acid got to him. And that would even help explain why he's so weak in this series, you know? He, he got messed up doing this. And that could even kind of improve the Tusken Raider aspect of it. Make it to where he crawls out, and the Tusken Raiders are trying to, like, steal his armor off him, but, like, the acid's burning him, so they throw it off. And they're intrigued because they just saw him blow up this Sarlacc pit from inside, you know? So that's why they take him. And moving past the first episode, I don't understand why they swapped out the villains in, I think it was episode 4. They trade the Huts for the Pikes as the villains for no real reason. I mean, the Pikes just aren't very interesting to me. I don't know if other people like them, but the Huts are way more interesting. We never really get to see them be awesome and understand why they're in power, you know? It would have been even better if you never even see the huts in this show. And throughout the whole show, the huts don't even consider them a real problem. You know, they they basically, they send Cad Bane, they send Bosk, they send Dengar, they send all these people after him just to get rid of him. You know, they throw money at their problems and Boba Fett has to defend against all his former allies. Now, I don't think it should have even been an aspect of the show like trying to get the town to like him. I mean, they should be pretty irrelevant here. He's a crime lord, you know? He's not a good dude. He shouldn't have the loyalty of the citizens. It shouldn't even be on his mind. It should be like a Game of Thrones type fighting for a position of power kind of show. And the reinforcements he finds in that biker gang is just terrible. I don't know who designed them, who thought this was a good addition, but it does not fit the Star Wars aesthetic whatsoever. Like the rainbow colored bikes and the giant gadgets on their heads, it just takes you out of it instantly. You know, it completely goes against everything Boba Fett is supposed to look like. He's supposed to be sleek and intimidating and silent and they are loud, obnoxious and just look like goth teenagers. It's just terrible. Especially a lot of the action sequences with them in this show is so bad. The spin move, the infamous spin, that terrible street chase scene hunting down the diplomat guy. And it's just worse because the show tries to act like they're cool and <laughs> they're just awful. I think the idea is not even terrible to have like people modding themselves with robot equipment, you know, like we see that guy in Cloud City or whatever, but man, just make it not visible, you know, like make it to where they have like robot arms and stuff, but they're covered just like the ones we see with Anakin and Luke, you know, it's like, why can't they mod themselves like that? And the last really odd writing decision to me is bringing Cad Bane in at the last episode. I mean, Cad Bane is amazing. He has a great rivalry with Boba and other stuff. I just don't understand, if you wanted him to come in for this, 
he's a big name. Make him the villain the whole time. Make him like the representative of the Pikes every time he deals with them. I don't think they'd even really have to use flashbacks to establish the rivalry they have, but they could just have an episode, Boba wins, you know, then next episode, Cad Bane outsmarts him, just go back and forth, establish a really good bounty hunter rivalry between them, and then you can earn that big climax in the last episode. I mean, Cad Bane doesn't enter until the end of the second to last episode of this series. It's like this is a fan favorite character fighting another fan favorite character. Th this should be the whole show, you know? This should be the biggest event happening here. Again, I do kind of like the actual fight they have. I like that Cad Bane's still quicker than him and Boba's held back by his armor and then Boba wins with the gaffy stick, you know? But even winning with the gaffy stick doesn't feel very earned because they didn't establish any kind of arc here and especially when Cad Bane keeps calling him a killer and teasing him about it. You know, that shouldn't really get to Boba because there's nothing in the series that establishes he feels bad about that at all. The most we get is that he no longer wants to work for a crime family because they send him to do stupid things and almost get him killed a lot. You know, that's not exactly a guilt trip redemption, that's just, it's more like a business decision. And I think that's why this redemption arc doesn't fit here, because that's really all the show needs to be. We don't, nobody wants to see a redeemed Boba Fett. We already have a good Mandalorian bounty hunter who has a show called The Mandalorian. We don't want another Din Djarin. We want Boba to be his darker counterpart, you know? We want a, another show not about someone incredibly soft-hearted, you know? Din Djarin already is a pretty bare-bones character when you really look at his motivations. He's just a nice guy who's a bounty hunter, essentially. And also, you know, he doesn't like droids for a season. I mean, on paper, Boba Fett should be a hundred times more interesting than Din Djarin. The Mandalorian should be a spinoff of this show, you know? This should be what we got first, to be honest. And instead, this show ruins itself and The Mandalorian Season 3. Inserting two episodes of The Mandalorian into this show feels like the writers got bored of their own show. It's like they thought the audience would rather be watching The Mandalorian, so they just gave up halfway through the plot and changed the channel. Two episodes is a significant chunk of a series that only had seven parts. If Boba Fett had two more episodes to develop Boba and Cad Bane, or at least show the Boba was beginning to care about the citizens if they really wanted to commit to that arc, it probably would have been a much more satisfying finale. Because don't get me wrong, both of these episodes would be a fantastic start to The Mandalorian Season 3, except for the choice where Grogu has to pick between being a Jedi or returning to Din. I'm not even opposed to Boba asking Din for help in the finale if you really want a cameo, but Boba asks him for a favor, and then also makes Din ask his friends for a favor. And it's not like a small favor, I mean, it's literally... Boba would not win in this show if he did not have the help of Freetown for reinforcements. It just makes Boba seem so desperate and like he's in way over his head. You can have Mando show up with one simple line of dialogue where Boba says, time to call in an old friend or something like that, and then in a couple scenes after that have Din show up. He definitely doesn't need two episodes to explain why he's in the show. And if you're gonna use him, you should not use his friends as well. He should literally be another member of the crew, maybe have some fun banter with him and Boba. It's cool to see them fly out in front of the where they're holed up in the city and fight for a bit, even though that gets kind of dumb. But Din Djarin should absolutely not be the deciding factor on if Boba wins or not. And you certainly should not be giving away two episodes you could use to develop your plot and characters simply to explain why the Mandalorian is in the show. And one of the biggest problems is that this doesn't just mess up the Book of Boba Fett, this messes up the Mandalorian. It ruins the entire show. Grogu returning to Din completely destroys the emotional ending of Season 2 and destroys the structure of Season 3. Din's season 3 arc should be something along the lines of finding his purpose as a Mandalorian again now that he no longer has Grogu, learning to master the Darksaber, and leading the Mandalorians to retake their homeworld. Bonus points if it also involves a civil war against Bo-Katan. Especially if Din doesn't want to lead but he feels obligated to to oppose her, and she fights him over the Darksaber. The whole season should have been a giant war for Mandalore ending with Din taking the throne and possibly in the season finale have Grogu decide he wants to come back and be a Mandalorian instead of a Jedi. Because they brought Grogu back immediately after building up his exit for two whole seasons of the Mandalorian, it makes those seasons feel pointless. 
Also the fact they undid a major plot point from the season 2 finale in an entirely different show punishes Mandalorian fans for not watching the Book of Boba Fett. If they didn't watch this show, it will make no sense when they watch season 3. Because season 2 ended with the clear intention of not having Grogu come back for quite a long time, he has nothing to do in his own show after this. Din also feels like he has nothing to do in Season 3, but that's not really the fault of the Book of Boba Fett, that's more a fault of writing the whole show around Bo-Katan. Mandalorian Season 3 has a lot of problems, and not all of them are because of this show, so if you want to see me tackle that, uh, let me know in the comments, I'll probably do an episode about it. But for now, we're just going to talk about how this show ruined it, the bad things that happened here that laid the groundwork for failure for season three. Grogu returning and also having half of the finale of this show be about that, just, it takes all the momentum out of the story. It's like, it's starting the next season of The Mandalorian without finishing this show properly. And on top of all this, Luke giving Grogu this choice doesn't make sense for his character, especially considering the choices about his attachment to his father figure. Why would Luke Skywalker, of all people, forbid attachments in his Jedi Order? The only reason he was able to succeed in defeating the Empire was because of his attachment to his father. Even when Yoda and Obi-Wan both told him that Anakin was gone and he had to kill Vader, he still saw the good in him and refused to do it. Him not killing Darth Vader when he defeated him because of his love for his father is what stopped Luke from turning to the dark side. And Vader's love for his son is what brought him back to the light and allowed him to kill the Emperor. Luke clearly understands and has proven that the Jedi were wrong about forbidding attachments. So him giving Grogu a choice between being a Jedi or having his father just makes no sense for Luke. It's completely out of character. And the Mandalorian's inclusion here and bringing Grogu back for Season 3 is a very corporate decision made to sell toys and it ruins their own show by doing it. And then to end the series, the whole town just starts respecting Boba Fett basically for destroying the city with his rancor. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. He wouldn't have even been fighting here if he didn't choose to and endanger. You guys would have been fine. There would have been no danger. He made a really dumb decision and everyone just loves him for it out of the blue. And look, the finale is not all bad there are nice things there you know there's stuff that's really cool to see him riding the rancor though it was predictable was cool the big uh Jordica looking droids were nice they were awesome to see some of the action scenes with Din Djarin and Boba flying around fighting was really cool it was probably the only time in the whole series that Boba Fett actually felt anything like Boba Fett even though he immediately got overpowered after that scene and Boba does have a good dynamic with Fennec Shand and Din Djarin but it just gets to be too much I mean, it's to the point where Fennec Shan feels like she should be in charge and Boba's just hanging around being useless. Mando comes in and basically becomes the protagonist for the rest of the series. The whole thing just ends up feeling so incohesive and like they had no idea what they wanted to do. They didn't know if they wanted this to be a Tusken Raider thing, they didn't know if they wanted it to be against the Pikes, against the Huts, or a big bounty hunter fest where they brought in Black Chrysanthemum and Bosk and all these people. It just feels incredibly disjointed and really just like they knew nothing about this character other than the armor he wears. Hopefully they'll read the feedback of season one that everyone has had and hopefully try to make it feel more like a Boba Fett show if they end up doing a season two. And that's not to say there isn't anything positive here. It's nice to see Cad Bane. It's nice to see Boba riding the Rancor. It's nice to see the Tusken Raider stuff. But it's still overall a bad showing for Boba Fett. And it makes him a worse character, you know? I thought he was much cooler before I saw this show. If I could have this show removed from the Star Wars lineup, I would absolutely take it out. My headcanon that I have of Boba Fett is so much better than this to me. And I mean, there is a version of this show using the groundwork they set with the Tusken Raiders that is really compelling and that I would love to be a part of Star Wars, but sadly it's just not what we got. So this show has to go up there with like the sequels of projects that I just pretend don't exist so that I can enjoy Star Wars more. But guys, let me know if I'm being too harsh on this show in the comments, if I'm not being harsh enough. If you guys didn't like the Tusken Raiders stuff, which I loved, Comment your thoughts about the show down below if you think they can fix it with the season 2 or if you just want them to stop. Please leave a like and subscribe and let me know what you want to see me cover next. Have a great day and I'll catch you all in the next episode of Headcanon.